I honestly do not get why people are like, you don't seem autistic. Dog, these are sensory items. This leather jacket is the same as like my comfort hoodie. I just have the coolest fuck autism. My hyperfixation is radicalness. No, but genuinely, I don't get it. I'll have these on and I'm talking to you like this and I'm not making eye contact. And I, when I do, it's very intense and I can't look away and it's bad. Like, what do you think that is? What do you genuinely think that is? Neurotypical people cannot see autism unless it's like so glaringly in their face. And that's because they're like only noticing it because it's impeding on their life. Like they now have to adjust for this new person to be more comfortable. And that's when they notice it, when it, when it affects them. It's affecting me. It's affecting me every fucking day. You chewing? You chewing's affecting me quite a bit. Quite a bit. I'm being so cool about it. I'm being so fucking chill about it. So chill about a lot of things, dude. Passive aggressiveness, just tell me. Just tell me. Why must we dance this dance? Just tell me why, like, it's so much simpler and it saves us all. I'll be nice. I'll be nice. Fucking don't, just don't. But being both cool as hell and madly autistic, from the bottom of my heart, fuck Corduroy. But not the bear, because he's also cool and autistic. We're deaf and queer. It's not that we didn't show up. We were just really late. We're deaf and queer. We definitely check out other interpreters. We're deaf and queer. We like our music speakers how we like our partners. Blow new. We're deaf and queer. We like to go to Ikea and pretend to fight to make hearing Pia Plin comfortable. We're deaf and queer. The sanctity of sign language. We'll ruin it. Oh, can we get her brownie? We're deaf and queer. Reading lips never tasted so good. <laughs> no, I've been an out lesbian for years now. I'll like kiss a woman and be like, I know exactly what you're talking about because it feels the same way to me and I've been out since I was in my early 20s and I'm 55. I came out in the early 90s and the first time I asked, the first time I even kissed a woman, I was like, oh my God, can this happen? Is this something that can happen? And it felt so good. Even now when I am allowed to take a woman, oh, here comes my dog. Oh, look out, Lumen. Oh, did someone let you out? Hi, hi, precious girl. Hi, whoa, whoa. When I'm allowed to take a woman on a date, when I'm allowed to kiss her, when she gives me the honor of trusting me with that, <laughs> I am absolutely out of this world happy and cannot believe that it's something that can happen to me. And I am, come here, Lumen! I am absolutely, come here, Lumen! Come here! Come on! Did I get cookies? No, you're not falling for it? I am always absolutely in awe and forever I will. I'm so OCD. I like to shower at least once a week. I have OCD, and every time before I leave the house, I have to videotape myself turning off the stove. And then I just watch it over and over and over again. And I imagine my pets dying a slow death in a fire. Why? But like, why do you have to check more than once? I feel like that's not- well, Like, I mean, I'm just trying to be safe. Like, I don't know, and then- But it was off. Well, how am I supposed to know? Like, whatever, okay, just let's just do it differently. Yeah. Go, go. I'm so OCD. When I go to the grocery store, I have to pay for every single item I got. I have OCD. And one time my coworker brought her baby into the office and I told her, your baby's so adorable. And then my brain went, that means you're attracted to children. Oh, so then I spent like the next year obsessing. Okay, what the heck is that? I mean, I'm obviously not attracted to children. It's like, like literally a baby. No, okay, well, I spent the next year avoiding all children. Like, it's not a big deal. I mean, okay, okay, one more, one more. It, yeah. I'm so OCD. When I'm driving, I like to stop at every single red light. I have OCD. And every time I'm on like a balcony or a cliff, I just think about like yeeting myself off the oh, edge. Stocks. Like, <laughs> I don't think we're gonna do these anymore. I don't know what, like, what's the problem? Why? Like, the, I, it's just like too dark. I tried to keep it pretty light, but whatever. Let's just go. Okay. Aren't you scared that your girlfriend's gonna leave you for a man because you're dating a bi girl and she could choose anyone in the world? No. Maybe let's play that back. She could choose anyone in the world. 
And she chose, she chose me. She crocheted me this hat. She made me this locket with our faces in it. Our stuffed animals are siblings through marriage. We have a blended family. Like there's something just very special about getting chosen by somebody who could pick anybody in the world. You know, like if another lesbian chooses me, I'm happy, I'm excited. But if she was only looking at a pool of lesbians, I got picked over four other people. But my girlfriend, who is not a lesbian, she picked me over the whole world. That's not scary, it's exciting! <laughs> I get, I get that it's not a great feeling when your ex goes to a man after you, but like, who cares? You don't have to date the man. You get to date other ladies. So who's really winning in this situation? I remember when I used to like, meet people and they knew my social media and they say I was like an asshole because I wouldn't say anything because I would like stand off to the corner and like just like as they talk to my friends first off talk to me if you want me to talk to you I don't know you you're a stranger my mama told me not to talk to strangers second off I'm autistic I don't know how many times I gotta say this I do not act good in social situations guys this isn't a little quirky thing. My diagnosis said severely impaired. I am severely impaired. How are you functional? I'm not. I'm really not. Yeah, sorry for shouting. Sorry for shouting. I'm not, guys. I'm not functional. I just survive. Because that's the only option. If I don't survive, I die. It's like sharks. Not to be a stereotype and like talk about sharks. But it's like sharks. If I stop swimming, I die. So just leave me be. The best thing about wearing clothing that says that I'm gay is when I go to Trader Joe's because I have been out of town and I really need some groceries. And me and my girlfriend go together. Separate cars because we have separate homes. We have to drive the groceries separately. Bring all of my things to the cashier and the cashier is looking a little fruity. They look at this and they say, oh, I, I love your sweatshirt, by the way. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Ha <laughs> ha. Blah, blah, blah. And then Trader Joe's employees, you know, they have to like flirt with you or whatever. They're like, they're like, oh, what are you doing this weekend? I'm like, blah, 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 blah. you know. And then I scan my little card and I move to the side, but I don't leave because who's coming next? My girlfriend walks up to get her groceries. And the cashier is like noticing that we're standing close together and I'm putting my hand on my girlfriend's back. And this cashier knows that that must be my gay girlfriend. And then not only have I been clocked as a gay person in the public, but I've been clocked as a gay person with a hot girlfriend. And then the cashier says to my girlfriend, I like your coat too. My girlfriend wasn't wearing anything that says gay, but it like said gay. Like the style was gay. The fear of looking ugly will ruin your life and steal your joy. First, wonderful video, all around. Second, this is, a this is a philosophy that I have adopted. And you can tell when you look at any of my videos. I grew up in a house of um, undiagnosed autistics and part of keeping a family mask. I, does anyone talk about that? I feel like undiagnosed autistics, when you have a whole family of undiagnosed autistics, you have a, a family mask. Is there a, is there a filter on me right now? Doesn't it look like there's a filter on me right now? Whatever. Anyway, my whole point is that, like, we as a family kind of masked to keep up appearances. Especially as, like, a poor family. And so, like, my older sister never left the house without wearing makeup. Very, like, nice clothes for nice places type of thing. If we're going to be seen, have to look the part. And so getting comfortable with my presence online and looking like this, life-changing. Because it's not my job to be attractive. Sometimes it'll hold your attention for a little longer or grab it, but it doesn't change anything about me or my personality or my intellect or my opinions. So like, who actually cares? I actually basically reached the conclusion I agreed with it, which was essentially like, I think for Finster and gender, there's a part of like a natural transition when you're shaking your wing back a little bit. You want me to explain this like an icky video? Yeah, go for it. As a part of your transition, where you are pretty much done with transitioning, you don't really care about being trans, you just are a person, and you can wear more gender neutral stuff and do more gender neutral things, because your gender identity is not the forefront of your mind anymore, it is the foundation.
foundation. So I'm a girl. I can wear baggy stuff and do boy hobbies because the foundation of my life is being a girl. Yeah, you're and, done experimenting. Right, you're done, and I'm done really yeah. thinking about it. And I think you have like got to that stage without the transition. You have a foundation of what you are and then there's just stuff that you like, but you haven't actually <laughs> ID'd it. You don't know. But yeah, essentially just I figured out the way I want to be without ID without, without ever figuring out Yeah, and uh, holy shit. That's totally fin. She said that and I went silent for like five minutes and went Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> like just yeah, that's exactly how I'd put it anytime someone asked me I was like, I don't care I don't know because I never had to I never had a moment of like what's it called? I just kind of got used to how I'm living, never thought about the gender related side of it, and now this is the way I am. I accidentally, like, gaslit myself into not believing in gender. That's <laughs> your fault. You guys did this to him. He could have been a normal boy. <laughs> <laughs>
Loved ones, let me tell y'all something. Stop using disabled people as your example of life looking worse. You know when you're trying to encourage your other non-disabled friends and you go, oh, life could always be worse. You could end up in a wheelchair. The f Who invited us to this conversation? We ain't had nothing to do with what your friend is going through. Stop doing that. Because you're continuing to perpetuate the message that living a life with a disability is life looking worse. Because there's a lot of people with disabilities who love their life, who feel like their quality of life has actually gotten better since becoming a person with a disability. So stop using us as the example of life looking worse. I've seen pastors do it. I've seen motivational speakers do it. Famous people do it. And I'm tired of it. Because it's not fair. Because the message you're sending to the disabled person who hasn't started their journey of self-love is that, yeah, their life is worse. And there's nothing they can do about it. And there's no way for it to make it better. And that's not true. And stop using us as the example of life looking worse. So all my disabled people keep living life and making it look good, boo. I'm tired of that. Okay, I love y'all. Of course we exist, just not in Russia. What? I'm okay. No Russian. Please, just do this for me. Please, please. Just, just one, maybe. We're gay Russians. Of course we're not gonna smile for you. We're gay Russians. Of course this is not cold. I'm just here because of him. Thank you, mate. We're gay Russians. Of course I love the twinks. What's the longest you've been in love? I've never been in love. Well, I'm asexual and aromantic, so I've kind of never had a crush on anybody. What does romantic attraction mean to you? There has to be a little bit of blindness, right? You're seeing them through a lens of what you want them to be. And I feel like in friendships, that doesn't happen in the same way, where you're kind of just people who love each other in friendships. You're not really making a person into this like image in your mind. Even if you're like romantically attracted to someone, you don't really know them until you've been with them for a long time. I've just never seen the appeal of trying to be with somebody if you don't know them. What's your sign? I'm an Aquarius. I have a question for any aces or non-binary folks watching this. I have no idea how we got onto this topic, but we ended up talking about like wishing that we just had nothing down there. And uh, May is one of my friends there, non-binary, and I'm ace. And I said, I feel the exact same way. And is this like a thing? Because then I messaged my friend who's ace and non-binary, and they said the same exact thing. <laughs> like, is this a universal experience that I just like, just became aware of? like? Is it an ace non-binary thing to just hate, like, the concept of genitals? <laughs> Mom, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. But I'm genuinely curious, like, like how many of us are out there? <laughs> I'm going out and I'm wearing an eye patch tonight. Normally don't ever wear eye patches, but this week has just been so nuts. People have felt so comfortable saying the rudest things about my eye. And I am not easily offended. So that's when you know it's bad. I don't personally drink anymore because I noticed it kind of made my flare-ups worse. And also I'm on methotrexate, so I couldn't even if I wanted to. But I still think it's important to get dressed up and see your friends and just have that social time. Like that is so big for my mental health and I just want to do it without people coming up to me and making me feel less than. If you make a funny eyeball joke, y'all know I'm gonna be the first to laugh at it. Like, come on! You can't be mean. Hello? It's also just been a really long week and my eye is red and tired. She's not looking her best. She just needs a little bit of time. It has occurred to me that I don't technically need to be doing <laughs> makeup on both sides of the eyeballs since I'm gonna be covering one up anyway, but oh well, here we are. Okay, the eyeliner for sure, we're just doing one eye. Okay, wow, well, just about everything that could have gone wrong just then did, but we made it. That's an Astasia lip pencil in shade Walk of No Shame. All right, let's grab the little eye patch. Okay, so boom, <laughs> little rose eye patch for tonight. It took a lot of adjusting, <laughs> but I'll let you know how tonight goes and hopefully it's an uneventful fun time. Eyeball privileges officially revoked. <laughs> 
Okay, here is a foolproof way to see if you like someone as a friend or as more than a friend. Because I think a lot of people get it confused, especially if you're a young girl who likes other girls and you're like, do I like this girl because I like her as a friend or do I like this girl because I want to smooch her lips? And here it is. I want you to do some creative imagining and I want you to imagine that you are at this person's wedding and you're in the audience. You're not getting married to them, whatever. And the reason I want you to pick a wedding is because if you think about your best friend, who you know for a fact you're not into like that, or a friend who you know you're not into like that, and you imagine being at their wedding, it's nothing but happiness. Because you know what? They're still your friend. You're not jealous in a friend way. Like, I think that we can get jealous of our friends having other friends because we want all the friendship, but you're not gonna be jealous of your friend having a spouse and, and like having, having that celebration. You're gonna be excited to be there, whatever. But if you're like, well, dang, they're off the market in this imagination. Like, even if you don't want to marry them, even if you're not serious about, like, if you're just trying to see if there's attraction there, I think there's a little bit of sadness that they're off the market in this imaginary dream, even if you don't want to marry them. So if you're trying to figure out if you want to smooch them on the lips or give them a little hug, just imagine you're at their wedding. Friendly reminder that there's nothing healthy about being well adjusted to a sick society. As neurodivergents, we've been forced to question our mental health our whole lives. But first, it's much more important to question the health of society. What is the purpose of conforming to society if it's not healthy for us? When neurodivergents are forced to mask up, to suppress the depths of our emotions, and to flagellate ourselves for not being able to conform to rigid rules of professionalism or behavior, that's unhealthy for us. Yet when we do those things, that's when we're considered healthy and functional. But how is self-policing healthy in any way? It's why people who are neurodivergent also have so many higher rates of depression and anxiety. Before labeling neurodivergence as disordered, we have to consider what's sick about society first. Society expects us to be working 9-5 to five jobs every day, to be dedicated to money and profit, and to suppress critical thinking. People are reduced to productivity machines. That's sick about society. There's a reason why 60-80% to 80 of adults with autism are unemployed. But neurodivergent people have wonderful traits, like, for example, a naturally strong sense of justice, except society punishes them for that. And that is sick that society does that to people. So why are neurodivergent people the ones getting labeled as unhealthy when it's society that's so sick in the first place? We're criticized and told to become functional in a way that feels so broken and dysfunctional to us. Our husbands are disabled. Of course people assume we're with them for the money. Our husbands are disabled. Of course people think we are intimate. Our husbands are disabled. Of course we never have to carry anything. Our husbands are disabled. Of course we always have a ride. Our husbands are disabled. Of course people assume we're angels. She's not. Our husbands are disabled. Of course they take care of us just as much as we take care of them. Our husbands are disabled. Of course our relationships are just as worthy, loving, and supportive as any other. <laughs> One day, I decided that I wanted to be gay. I wanted to be a Honestly, the girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. Because I understand 100% what she's saying. I feel like I had a very similar experience coming into my sexuality. Back in 2020, at the height of the pandemic, where literally all we could do was just sit at home and reflect on our gender and our sexuality, I somehow ended up on compulsory heterosexuality TikTok. And I knew what compulsory heterosexuality was. At that time, I was identifying as bisexual and I had identified as bisexual for a long time. And what I thought was that compet is what was tying me to identifying as straight for all those years. And in 2020 was the first time that I had a chance to ask myself if it was compulsory heterosexuality that was tying me to continue to engage with men, period, at all. So I kept going back and forth about this. Am I lesbian? Am I bisexual? Am I a lesbian? Like, I, I, I didn't know. Like, I felt so confused about it. Until I saw a TikTok, and this girl was like, you know what? If you don't know if you're a lesbian, just stop dating men. Just stop dating men and see what happens. You don't have to date men. You literally do not have to date them. Just stop dating them and see what happens. And that's what I did. 
and I haven't dated men since. And since I've stopped dating men, I feel like I've been able to finally access what love and romantic and sexual relationships are supposed to feel like, which has been like really, really exciting. And I feel like we're so close to getting to the point of understanding that like all of this gender shit is made up. Um, and if I feel like we should be even closer to realizing that a lot of the sexuality shit is made up too. Now, my unpopular opinion is that whatever label that you've chosen to describe your sexual orientation, whether it's bi, lesbian, pan, gay, whatever, um, those things describe your tendencies when it comes to romantic and sexual relationships. So how you tend to engage, who you tend to engage with. I personally don't believe that the label that you choose is going to 100% capture the diversity and the variety of what you are actually attracted to. So you could choose to be gay. You could choose to apply that label to yourself if you feel like it best describes who you are and what you actually want when it comes to dating. You could choose to be straight. I don't know why you would choose to do that, but some people do. I think the problem is that we as a queer community had to hold on to this born this way rhetoric in order to get the straights and the homophobes to understand us and give us our rights but I think that that born this way rhetoric is very very limiting and just is not completely honest to like what the queer experience is for a lot of us My wife is deaf and her and I are used to being stared at when we're signing in public, but we had an experience a few days ago that was just so obvious, I wanted to talk about it a little bit. So we were, uh, we're hanging out in a bar, we're sitting at a table across from each other, and then this person shows up and stands right over here. So um, we started calling him ping pong because uh, I would sign something and he would go, Whoop. and then she would reply and he would go, Whoop. and just back and forth, back and forth. So my wife is big uh, black cat energy and she's just smiling the whole time. She's just like, this is fun. I'm more the, uh, the golden retriever and I was like, okay, I'm going to play. So we're chatting, 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 chatting. And then I just look over at the person and I'm like, right? And his jaw drops. And then this is where it gets a little frustrating because his reply was, this is so cool. It's almost like the two of you are communicating in a real language. And I'm just like, so we, we are, it's sign language. It's, it's, it's a real language. And you could just see in his, his brains thinking and thinking, he's just like, uh-huh. Mm.